What's up you guys, I'm here with a new video today and I'm here to talk to you guys all about Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries and why it's almost becoming a staple in the main deck. Absolutely insane uh, when you really think about it. Uh, this card, you know, was released and it was supposed to be the end of Burning Abyss. This card single-handedly was supposed to be the end of Burning Abyss because you simply reveal a Dante, they banish all their Dantes. Burning Abyss players are then pretty much out of luck. They do have other rank threes, they can come back, but when you take away their most important card in their extra deck, they really can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. So Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries was one of the most hyped cards. It was super hyped. It did do, you know, it did do what it was supposed to do. But Burning Abyss still played around it. They still were able to play the game. They had Break Swords. They had, uh, what was it? They had uh, Leviers. They had Grand Poles. They had other cards to play around. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries because they prepared for it. They knew that it, you know, that it was going to happen. So with that, they uh, were able to, you know, play around it and. Uh, the card was still really good. You use it, you know, against Dante no matter what. They sided three in the mirror match along with Flying C, Maxi, etc. So you always had outs to, um, you always had outs to, uh, Burning Abyss with that card. Now flash forward and how has the card been doing? The card has gone up and down. It's been used. It hasn't been used. It really just depends on, you know, player preference. It's still probably one of the best outs to Burning Abyss. Uh, and you are able to use it against decks like Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes had Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. You just hit that card, can't play it, negates graveyard effects. That was huge for certain decks. So being able to cherries away that was really important. Uh, people started adding a bunch of different targets. They would add Break Sword. They would add um, Omega because of the Dark Synchro deck. You know, hit Omega. They can't Omega loop you. They can't hit your hand, so you can still play. So it had a lot of versatility. But now let's focus on what's happening right now. ABCs are without a doubt the most represented and probably the most played deck and probably the best deck right now now this format one simple winter cherries on abc buster dragon means abc can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. they literally are nothing at that point than like i said in my last video a generic rank four deck nothing wrong with that we've had plenty of generic rank four decks however they are just not as strong as they are when they have the buster dragon versus not having the buster dragon so if you winter cherries away the buster dragon early game they can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. they literally are relying on rank fours and rank fours are great, but they will not get you there against, you know, the ABC mirror against something like that or another matchup. It just won't happen no matter what, unless you just get really lucky. Your opponent just misplays like out the ass. Like you're not going to get that lucky. So Winter Cherries has found its home in a lot of decks. If you guys saw the decks that won, the deck that won Liverpool, he was main decking Winter Cherries. If you've seen some of the Dark Magician decks, my boy Sam was playing ABC's main decking Winter Cherries. Um, his boy Nock was maining this in Dark Magician. I think this card is amazing in Dark Magicians just because it's the fact that, okay, at, if you play three of them, you see one, you cherries away the problem. If you draw another one, you can go seven and three, you can make a Leo. I know that doesn't sound like that much, but when he brought it up in the in the deck profile, it sounded like it, it was really great because Leo's a 3,100 beater. It gets over blue eyes and it can't be targeted. I mean, that, that's pretty damn cool. Just saying. But uh, Winter Cherries has started to find his home in a lot of these main decks. Uh, Tommy Rowe played it in his main deck. He played. It seems like Chaos Hunter and Winter Cherries are becoming like the new main deck staples because Chaos Hunter literally says you can't banish to summon... ABC Buster Dragon. Cherry just said, if I hit your ABC Buster Dragon, it's game. You have cherries for Dante. You have cherries for, like, any other matchup. Like, you can literally go into a tournament main decking cherries. And if your extra deck has a space, like kind of Dark Magician does, you have the ability to play all these cherry targets, and you're able to just win the game because of that. You can literally put anything in there. You can put, um, you name it, like, you can pretty much put it in there. And I think that's just crazy. Like I said, Omega for the, you know, the Trisha, for the hand loop decks. You have, um... What do you call it? You have uh, Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon for Blue Eyes. You have Dante for Burning Abyss. You have, um, if you want to go as far as to put Break Sword 2, that gives them another thing they can't play. You don't even have to put Beatrice because once you hit Dante, they can't make Beatrice, so you pretty much just win with that. If you're fortunate enough to own a Minerva, you can just Minerva away. <laughs> you can Ghost Cherries a Minerva, and then the Light Sword deck just cries because like the whole point of their deck is like gone. So I know that's a huge hypothetical, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. You can even do it in the Mirror Match if you're playing Dark Magician or whatever. I just think the card has really elevated to a very solid, almost staple card. Now, what decks can utilize this? I don't really know to what extent every deck can. I know Blue Eyes. I don't think I would see Blue Eyes main decking Winter Cherries. We know for a fact that Burning Abyss can, and we know that ABCs can. They can main deck these cards to give them an advantage against both those matchups. So it's very interesting to see uh, if this card will continue to be a staple in a lot of main decks. I could definitely see it being used in other decks. It just, I think the format will have to keep, you know, establishing itself for us to figure out just how effective the card is. So I think it's just a really, really interesting, you know, turn of events for, for this 
card because it went from being one of the most feared cards in Yu-Gi-Oh to being kind of subpar to kind of being put on the back burner to kind of, you know, being used because it was good, using it for its effect to now where you can splash it in the main deck and just your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think that's pretty crazy. So yeah. So that's all I got to say, you guys. I want to open up the discussion in the comments. What do you guys think about Grocery Reaper and Winter Cherries in the main deck? Do you feel it's a staple in the main deck? Do you feel that, you know, do you feel that this card is like next level? Like this is the card that's going to carry you to a win at a YCS because you're able to Winter Cherries away all the problems. Do you feel the card is completely overrated? Do you feel that like the card sucks? Do you feel that the card is just not good and like it's better in the side deck than it is in the main deck and you're wasting main deck space? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what decks you think can utilize this the best and why. And if you're using it yourself, what are your targets? Like, what are you trying to knock out? I mean, if you have an open extra deck like uh, Dark Magicians does, you can really do a lot of cool things with this. So I might be a little late to the party on this, but I just wanted to give a discussion on it. Um, i just been busy, you know, taking care of my mom and everything. Again, thank you guys for all the support. You know, she's uh, going in tomorrow to have her stitches removed. So she's going to be, you know, she'll be doing a lot better. So thank you guys for the, you know, continued support. I just want to get videos out when I can. But I thought this would be a really good discussion. You guys seem to really like my discussions, and I'm glad you do. If there's anything else you guys want me to talk about, be sure to comment, uh, uh, mention it in the comments, as well as open up the discussion to how you feel about this evolution of this card in the main deck, side deck, and just becoming almost like a staple in the main deck now. Let me know what you guys think. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to smash that like button, check out the other videos, and I'll bring in more videos to you guys soon. Thank you for watching.